So this is more like a summary of what a perfect day of prayer and fasting looks like. So by this, it means that it's not every day of your prayer and fasting that is going to look like this. Neither are the timelines that I'm going to give, you know, exactly something that you should follow. You should be led by the Spirit of God. But I want to give an example to people who have never done prayer and fasting or who just want to improve their prayer and fasting. And I, I want to say that this is best implemented on a day that you know that uh, you're going to be home the entire day. And if you have uh, children and you have no one to help you to care for your, for your children, it's different. You're going to have to be, uh, you know, you're going to have to change it to what can fit into your schedule. This is what the day of prayer and fasting looks like. So your last meal is your dinner on the previous day before your fast. You know, when you have your dinner, that is your last meal until the next day at 6 p.m. So you wake up at 5 before your family wakes up, before other people wake, wake up, before, you know, that time while well, it's still quiet, then you spend your time in prayer. So when you finish praying, you can bath. If you have children, you can uh, do this and that for your children. But you make it a point like to begin your real day of prayer, like as early as possible, you know, let's say maybe by 8 or even, uh, let's say maybe by 8, you know, because maybe you spent like an hour or more or less depending on you know where you are with your prayer you know how easy it is for you to pray you know you don't have to feel bad about it sometimes maybe you, you're only able to spend 30 minutes that's okay maybe you're only able to spend 20 minutes at a time that is okay you know but you just keep asking the lord to help you so now the whole idea is how do you spend this time what do you do in your prayer room you know many people find that oh i get so bored you know like what do i do i feel like i have already prayed i feel like i have nothing else to say to the lord so at eight you go back into your prayer room you know you start to pray you know you dedicate your day to the lord you tell the lord to say lord i have chosen this day as my day of prayer and fasting you know prayer is from the heart i'm just giving you an example it doesn't mean you have to say the exact words that I'm saying. I'm giving an example of what your prayer could look like. You know, you tell the Lord, I'm giving you this time, I'm giving you this day, and I just want you to help me, you know. I want you to help me that I may spend this entire time with, with you. And you tell the Lord, you know, you can tell the Lord, like, the reason I'm fasting is because of this and that. Lord, I'm fasting because I want this breakthrough, because I want this miracle, or because I just want to, to draw closer to you, because I want to have greater victory over sin or because I just want to seek for strength from you or I want to seek for wisdom from you, you know, whatever the reason that you're doing your prayer and fasting, you tell the Lord, this is why I'm doing my prayer and fasting. So you spend some time in prayer to dedicate to the Lord. And of course the Lord starts to give you the words to say. So let's say maybe you spend an hour or less, depending on how well advanced you are like in your prayer life. So you can put your phone on silent and just keep it in another room, you know, so that you don't get disturbed. If it's possible for you to just uh, check on it later in the evening, that's even better. But if it's not possible for you to just check on your phone later in the evening, maybe you have some urgent calls, you can keep it in another room and then in between your prayer uh, sessions, you can go and check if somebody called you, if you need to call them back and all that. But the ideal is you put your phone away, you know, like you don't spend your time on the social media. Neither do you spend your time watching other people's sermons, you know, because you're going to find that maybe you just waste your whole fasting, you know, there's a time for everything. Watching people's sermons is beneficial, but is it the right day? Is it, is it something that is the best thing to do on your day of fasting? You know, you're going to find that your fasting is much more powerful if your time and your attention is fully given to Jesus than on your phone. So let's say you finish your prayer at nine. So what do you do next? You get your Bible and you start to read. You can start to read verses about faith or you can start, you know, verses that build up your faith, like what Jesus is giving promises of answered prayer or you might even just want to start reading like an entire book of the bible like you can get like maybe you start to read the book of isaiah you know you start to read you, you like you start from isaiah chapter one that's another way that i like to read actually like especially at my beginning of uh, of seeking jesus i used to read a lot of the books of the bible like that like reading an entire book at a time you know so let's say you 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 use that method you start to read the book of isaiah like from 
chapter one, you start to read, um, you read for some time, maybe like an hour, you're going to find that there are so many things that the Lord is going to start to teach you through those passages. You know, you might find promises of God's help. You might find promises of God's deliverance. And, you know, you might want to highlight or take notes or whatever you do, you know, in order for you to remember the things that are important to you or the things that uh, gives a message to you, you know, to encourage you when you're seeking the Lord. So you start to read that. Let's say you read for another hour. So let's say you read from nine to 10, you know, then now it's 10. So what do you do, you know? So now at 10, you can put your Bible aside. Probably you're even tired of reading now, you know? So you can put your Bible aside and you start to praise the Lord. You know, you start to sing songs of praise to the Lord. You can start to sing songs of praise songs of worship, you know, songs that glorify God, songs that are going to make you meditate on God's power, God's goodness, you know, spiritual songs. Spiritual songs are very important. We know the story in the Bible where Paul and Silas, they were jailed and they began to sing, you know, and when they began to sing, the, priest, the, the jail opened. The Lord set them free. So music is very, very powerful. It's a very powerful part of our worship. And it's really, it's really something that I can encourage you to incorporate in your relationship with the Lord. So let's say from 10, you know, from 10 to, let's say again, let's give it another hour. Let's say from 10 to 11, you start to sing spiritual songs. You know, you, you, you're even going to get carried away, you know, in worshiping God, because when you start to worship the Lord, when you start to sing about how good he is, it's going to start to become so real. If you start to sing about heaven, heaven is going to start to become so real, you know, just so, so real. So let's say we give it another hour. And these timelines I'm just giving as an example, you know, uh, some people may find that they have to shorten the times, but you get the idea of what I'm talking about, of how you spend your day of prayer and fasting. So let's say you give it another hour. So from 10 to 11, you start to sing. You know, you start to sing from, for the Lord. Then at 11, you are still in your prayer room. That is the ideal, you know. You are still in your prayer room at 11. So at 11, again, you start to pray. You know, from 11, let's say, let's give it an hour. You know, like, for example, from 11 to 12, you start to pray again. Sometimes even the things that you have already prayed about, you can pray for them over and over. An example of Elijah, when Elijah was praying for God to send the rain, how many times did he pray about the very same thing? At the exact same period of time, okay? I'm not talking about, like, you pray about it today, tomorrow. No, Elijah prayed seven times that's when the answer came praying about the very same thing daniel prayed for 21 days and that is when the answer came so just because in the first prayer you prayed about something it doesn't mean you cannot pray about it now jesus gives an example of effective prayer and he gives the example of a widow who kept going back to the judge over and over throughout the day, telling him the exact same thing. All that matters is you are speaking from the heart. You are not telling God things while your mind is wandering off, you know. Your mind is, is uh, out there, you know, uh, shopping or playing all these games or doing this and that. No. Okay. You are speaking to the Lord and your mind is there. When you're saying, Lord, I want you to draw me closer to you. Even your mind wants that, okay? So if your mind tries to wander off because the enemy attacks us like that, you need to capture it, okay? You take authority, you bind the demonic spirits of a wandering mind and you ask the Lord to help you so that you, hold, you, you serve him in truth and spirit. You tell the Lord to say, Lord, help me so that even my whole, my mind, my spirit, my soul, everything is going to be here in your presence to seek you. You know, you start to pray, you start to tell the Lord to help you to love him. And, you know, that is a miracle, you know, like we cannot love the Lord unless he makes us to love him. So you start to tell the Lord you want him to, to help you to love him. The sins that you want to overcome, there are sins that you cannot overcome without prayer and fasting. So many people fail to break free from demons of pornography, demons of masturbation, 
de uh, demons of sexual immorality. These are some of the very stubborn demons that people fail to break free from. But if you use prayer and fasting, you're going to overcome them. You don't have to keep going back to your sin over and over. Jesus is able to give you complete victory, whereby when he, when he breaks the chains, never are you going to go back there. That is very possible. You don't have to keep falling into those sins. So you start to tell the Lord the sins you're struggling with. To say, Lord, I'm always falling into this sin. Break off the chains. You know, you start to pray. And the Lord starts to give you the things to pray for. You just start to tell the Lord that, Lord, I want to spend sufficient time in your presence. Give me the ability to spend this time in your presence. When you ask the Lord for help, he does help. So this is the time that you spend now with God and you start to pray. Even the things that you have prayed about, if something is really so important to you, the same way it was so important for that widow to get justice from the unjust judge. She didn't mind that, oh, I already told him about this uh, an hour ago, you know. The Bible says she kept on coming over and over until he gave her what she wanted. Elijah, when he was praying for the rain, the Bible says he would send the, the young man to go and check if there's any, any sign of the rain. He would come back and say there's no sign. He would pray again and pray again and pray again. That is persistent prayer. So just because you prayed about something in your first prayer, it doesn't mean you cannot pray about it. You pray about it and also you start to add up on other, other prayers, you know, that you start to realize, oh, I actually need to pray for this. I actually need to pray for this, you know. I actually need to pray for the Lord to, to help me to actually enjoy this time that I'm fasting. I actually need to pray for the Lord to give me strength that even after this fast is over, I'm still going to be able to have desire to pray. I'm still going to, to be able to have the ability and the power, the strength to, to pray. So let's say you, you start to pray again from 11 to 12. At 12 hours, now you're done with your prayer. And you know that your fasting is up to 6 p.m. At 12 hours, you're done with your prayer. What do you do? You start to do something else. You can start to read the Bible again. You start to read the Bible again. Let's say you read again from 12 to 13. And all these things that I'm telling you, it is effective. And I say it is effective because it worked for me and it works for so many other people who spend the entire fasting period in the presence of the Lord. It is so very effective. So this is the time that is dedicated for the Lord. It is not the time for your pleasure. It, this is the time to forget about all other programs and just focus on Jesus. So you pray, uh, you pray from 11 to 12. 12, you start to read the Bible again. So let's say you read from 12 to 13. 13 to 14, you can start to praise and worship the Lord again. Then from 14 to 15, you start to pray again. Even if, even if you have to pray over the prayers you have prayed. The same way Elijah had to pray over the prayers he had already prayed. But Jesus teaches us persistence in prayer, like that widow did, until the answer comes. So you start to pray again, let's say from 14 to 15. 15 to 16. You, again, you start to read the Bible. You're going to find that you, you have read so much of the Word of God. 15 to 16, uh, you, you are reading the Bible. From uh, 16 to 17, you can either start to worship or you can decide to pray again. You know, so you pray again since we're only remaining with an hour. So you can say from 17 to 17.30, you can start to either read the Bible again or to worship. You know, sing songs to the Lord so that you remain with the last 30 minutes to spend in your conclusion from 17:30 to 18 you can use that time to conclude your day of fasting you know to talk to the lord about the things on your heart if the things that you have learned uh, during this period you know asking the lord to give you strength now that you're going out into the world you know um, it seems so easy to overcome when you're in the presence of the lord but once you go out in the world, you're like, there are all these things that I have to overcome. So you ask the Lord that now that your day of fasting is ending, you know, you ask the Lord to help you, to keep you from all those things that kill your spiritual life so that you don't relapse back into wasting your time. So that the Lord helps you to spend your time on the things that are valuable, you know, you don't just, so that you don't just finish your fast and there you are in the things of the world, you know, filling up on the world again and you find that you are spiritually weak as though you just... You, you weren't just from fasting, but you ask the Lord that, Lord, even after this fast, I'm asking you to give me the strength to keep 
staying in your presence and if possible even after when, when after you break your fast you can go back and spend some time in prayer then that's when you can go and do other things or if you can't it's okay like you have given the lord this time have given the lord of this period you know so you can go and do those things that you wanted to do the important thing is after your fast you have to maintain the strength that you got you know by praying regularly you know you don't say oh after i did a fast so i'm going to stay like two days without prayer no you have to keep praying every single day and a day of prayer and fasting honestly that is spent like that you're going to find that by the end of your fast your body is going to feel uh, kind of tired just because of all you know the praying and you know all those things that you are doing and that's okay you know because you can go and rest but you have gained so much more your, your spirit man would have been strengthened so much more so you can incorporate this kind of a perfect day of prayer and fasting that's what i want to call it because the whole time is spent with the lord you know you can incorporate this into a regular into your regular schedule and you're going to see a very huge difference in your relationship with jesus and when you are not able to do this uh, perfect day of prayer and fasting it doesn't mean you cannot do fasting you can do fasting you know but uh, this one for where you spend the entire period you know it's something that you have to fix in you know somewhere if it's if you're going to be able to fix in it to fix it in is it weekly is it every two weeks you know but you will find that it is very very powerful and in between you can do the uh, the regular fasting which you can do even when you're at work uh, at school or at your business or whatever you do you know and you just make sure that during that period of, of fasting is not starvation but you are actually spending time with God like every chance that you get you can read your bible you stay away from entertainment you know all the things that kill your time you know you spend the time instead reading the bible and praying even when you go about your daily duties and make sure you have some period where you can actually like have some prayer time you know undistracted maybe at the beginning of your day I would advise you at the beginning of the day you can have prayer very early in the morning and also um, maybe during your lunch break you know you can pray instead since you're fasting and then you can also pray in the evening before you break your fast but the uh, perfect day of fasting that i wanted to share this is this is it like you're going to see a very huge difference